Dear seekers of the unknown, before we plunge into the abyss, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Only then you will receive our dark whispers in the dead of night. Damned Vampires, The Masquerade Ballad. Chapter 1. The Masquerade of Fate. Charlotte Crowthorn, the daughter of a wealthy family, was passing through the Grand Salon where the masquerade party was in full swing. The guests were adorned in costumes hiding behind ornate masks. She was utterly bored. This year, her best friend Eleanor had moved away, leaving her with nothing to do but smile politely and sip her drink. Her family was celebrating a business merger with another affluent lineage, the owners of St. Agnes Hospital. Charlotte found a silver lining in this union. She would soon begin working at the hospital, escaping the confines of her large, cold home for a few hours each day. As she stood in the party, a glass of wine in hand and lost in thought, she was startled by an elegant gentleman who apologized before asking her to dance. They fell deeply in love that night, an impossibility given that they had only shared a few hours and no words. Yet, when he kissed her hand at the evening's end and vanished, the fiery connection in their gazes was unforgettable. Months later, Charlotte was immersed in her duties at the hospital, finding solace in aiding others and learning new things daily. However, the memory of the gentleman haunted her thoughts continuously. One evening, as she was resigning herself to the likelihood of never seeing him again, a harrowing sight stopped her cold. Julian Mortismer, lying on the ground in the shadows, writhing and crying out in desperation. She ran to him. Blood, please, he whispered. Without hesitation, she tore his sleeve, sliced open her skin, and nourished the dark creature with her pouring blood. Revitalized, Julian revealed his cursed fate, how he was transformed against his will, and his loathing for taking lives to survive. Their bond was unbreakable, and motivated by her love, Charlotte risked everything. She offered him sanctuary in a hidden room within her family's mansion. She vowed to sustain him with blood from the hospital's therapeutic phlebotomies. He was deeply in love with her, and her sacrifice was a salve for his tormented heart and soul. Chapter 2 Unspoken Bonds Julian's passion for Charlotte grew insurmountably with each passing day. His vampire instincts raging like a fever whenever he gazed upon her. Yet he dared not speak a word or lay a hand on her, fearing he might taint his beloved with the curse of his dark existence and impossible dreams. Similarly, Charlotte found it impossible to focus on anything but Julian. Her life now revolved solely around his needs and her profound love for him. For a considerable time they coexisted in this manner, their feelings for each other intense yet unspoken. Chapter 3 The Velvet Grief As another year slipped by and the time for another grand party arrived, Charlotte adorned herself in a stunning red velvet dress her heart brimming with love, but her eyes betrayed a redness born of cherished memories and unattainable joy. She prepared to attend the event as she always did, yet she granted herself a solitary moment before the mirror to release her tears and weep away the sorrow before donning her customary smile for the guests. In the guise of a rat, having located Charlotte's room by scent, Julian watched her intently. He was consumed by her radiant beauty, and yet felt a profound longing to end his existence, as her tears and silent suffering were more than he could bear. 
Chapter 4 Turbulence in the Shadows Inside the Grand Salon was a light with revelry, filled with the sounds of feasting, dancing and laughter. Outside, thunderstorms rumbled through the night, the tumultuous echoes mirroring the chaos within Julian's dimly lit quarters. Racked with pain and doubt, he was growing weary of his supernatural affliction and the malevolent consequences that came with it. Weary of enduring such a cursed existence, he contemplated unleashing hell itself. He was ready to transform Charlotte and escape with her, to end the torment of existing in separate realms, and to forsake the path of righteousness. His internal strife was abruptly cut by a familiar voice from the window above. Have you given any thought to my proposal? Our plans? Julian responded with a murmur tinged with impatience. I would never do it, Tristan. His voice was weary. How many times must I tell you? Why do you persist? Chapter 5 The Temptation of Tristan Tristan Grimshaw, a creature of the night like Julian, was the very one who had ensnared him into vampirism. Throughout the epics of his long existence, Tristan had never encountered anyone quite like Julian whose humanity and vulnerability drew him in irresistibly, much like a moth is captivated by moonlight. Tristan was well aware that winning Julian's heart would not be easy, which only heightened his determination. The challenge of earning his friendship and affection was a tantalizing pursuit. Almost every night, Tristan exerted his considerable charm and power to seduce Julian. But ever since Julian's transformation, all he had met with was refusal and rebuff. During their last encounter, Tristan suggested they live together, away from the prying eyes of mortals, to embrace their nature freely and without restraint. Charlotte, innocent and unaware, had no knowledge of this other vampire, let alone that he was a frequent visitor to Julian's hidden sanctuary. Chapter 6 The Scream in the Corridor The festivities had ended and Julian was steeling himself for a pivotal conversation with Charlotte, oscillating between excitement and fear over her response to his proposition. The animal within him was elated as never before. His fangs were keen, his thirst insatiable, his breaths deep and lifelike as if he were a wolf on the hunt. Julian's eyes glowed like crimson stars in the endlessness of space. However, as he made his way to Charlotte's chamber, a sudden melancholic scream halted him. A void petrified his immortal heart, and he stood horrified, his mind covered by hideous visions. In the desolate corridor, a place where he and Charlotte had shared countless secret meetings, Tristan appeared, bearing Charlotte's lifeless body. His emergence was deliberate, and he could scarcely conceal his grim satisfaction as he presented the scene to Julian. I tried to revive her, but it was too late, Tristan declared, a twisted smile playing at the corners of his mouth. Chapter 7 Aftermath on Canvas with the break of day, the sun shone clear and bright. Atop a shadowed hill, an early rising artist had set up his tools of trade, brush, canvas, and easel. He was absorbed in capturing peculiar and macabre tableaus. In his paintings, a lavish open terrace on the second floor of a grand mansion came into view. Rendered on canvas, Two charred remains were depicted in a grotesque stillness, one enshrouding the body of a woman and the other suspended from the ceiling, dangling like a beast upended in the throes of a final, grim dance. The end. Thanks for watching.